Well, I felt like by me doing time, my family was doing time. You know, when you get incarcerated, that takes a toll on your family. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't know which way to turn. They don't know who to talk to. You know, they don't know who, who to put their money in who hands. So everybody, when you're doing time, it's almost like, you know, you got to, you got to orchestrate day, mo day, day movement because the only thing they can go by is what you tell them. You know, and like I say, most times, you know, you try to do the best you can, but I mean, your, your, your knowledge of what you tied up into is, 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 I mean, you just can't, you can't explain to them what they really need to do. I had to be uh, 15 at the time when, when he was convicted. And it, it really, I'm gonna say, shook me to the, to the core because that was, that was my big brother. And you you telling us that you know you taking you want to take his life, and we had never experienced anything like that before. And it took a while for me to come to the realization that we wasn't going to see him anymore. So it 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 took a while to absorb it. And and I can say one day I did get kind of teary eyed, but I didn't let him see me he loves salads so he eats salads all the time and he would tell me like there was a club up there like they had to buy stuff from clubs he said a salad might have been like $15 I'm like for one salad so he's like yeah but you had shredded ham on there you know and he said it was a pretty big size salad he said and I could make like two ham sandwiches off of it he said I could eat off of that salad for like two or three days and I'm like two or three days you know that has mayonnaise you know and stuff in it and I'm like I'm sure y'all didn't have refrigerators to put it in, so what did you do? And he was like, oh, you know, I used to put it on the floor, you know, under the bed, because that was cement, so it kept it cold, you know? And I had to get up and walk out of the room because it's like you had to adapt to stuff like this when you shouldn't have never been in there to begin with, you know? And that's the kind of things that, you know, like I said, it, it sparks anger in me. Because it's like you had to adapt to stuff like this. And again, you should have never even been in there. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, 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 like I said, it's just stuff like that. But he's not angry about it. So if he can forgive him, then so can I. Oh, yeah, it's a lot we missed. Like I said, he could have been a father. He could have had grandchildren. So he missed out on that. Well, no, whatever God do is well done. Yeah, you gotta look at the big picture, whatever God do. And you know the good part? He's not bitter about any of it. He said, mama, it done happened now, it's gone, let it go. We can't bring it back. So he's not bitter about it. My people, my people never believe I done that from the beginning, but it's just the idea. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain to your people something that you didn't do. So, you know, and like I say, what they support and being there for me, you know, that's basically what kept me going all this time, you know? So, uh, and the only thing I was really afraid of, whether or not if I was gonna die in prison, you know, whether or not the truth would ever came out, mm -hmm. see? So, I mean, it was always there for me, like they are now. If you have a, a loved one incarcerated, the whole family's incarcerated because you feel his pain, what he go through, you go through, you know? He's suffering on the inside, you're suffering on the outside. It's the whole, the whole family, everybody's sentenced, everybody. When he got his exoneration, we got our exoneration. <laughs>